Liverpool have never been in this position before. They literally own the best player on the planet. He tweeted, here we go. And I was a bit surprised when I saw it, but was not related to, to football or Newcastle. So football <laughs> is like this sometimes. Hello and welcome back on Debatable on 11 Football with me, Fabrizio Romano, ready to discuss together about football, of course, transfers, we are in transfer window, and many other things related to football, as always. With me today, super pleasure to be joined by Paul Mitchin from Redman TV, the biggest Liverpool fan channel on YouTube, and not only, how are you, Paul? Yeah, great, very good indeed, mate, thanks for having me on. Super pleasure to be together with you and we will discuss Liverpool, so it will be one of our big topics today because Liverpool transfer strategy is something that I think is really interesting to be um, discussed. But we start with some tweets also from other clubs and other updates that we had in the last few days and I wanted to start with Arsenal because Arsenal are pushing to sign Artur Melo on loan from Juventus. He's one of the main names in the list and the player is open to the move. So let's see what happens between Juventus and Arsenal in negotiation because Juventus would need a replacement in case they will allow Artur Melo to leave in January. Wanted to ask Paul to start your, your opinion on Arsenal in this moment on the, on the transfer market, uh, their ideas, their strategy. They already decided to let Michael and Niles to, to leave and join Roma. So your idea on Arsenal project at this point? Yeah, I, it feels like Arsenal are getting back on track. You know, I think there's been a number of years in the wilderness. We, yes. we talked a couple of years ago. Quite clearly, the strategy was with Wenger leaving was to double down on star names. And I think that's left. Well, you can see the, the stuff with Aubameyang still lingers on. Obviously, that was what would it be? And it was Mkhitaryan, Aubameyang and, and, and Tyan Erzl down at the time. And Arsenal are still sort of reeling from the post-Wenger fallout. And it does feel like Arteta's uh, very much turned the corner. It feels like he's got a style that he wants to impose as the type of player that he wants. And it actually looks like he's being supported to get it as well. Yes, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with, with midfielder because they need a midfielder, but also what happens with, with striker. And we're going to discuss about Dujan Blauvic future together. One of our topics, one of the most discussed players in the world in this moment. But let's move to another tweet about Manchester United at this point and about Eric Bailly because his future it will be decided soon. And AC Milan are interested in Bailly as potential new centre-back own loan deal. Talks have been opened with the player with Man United. Nothing has been agreed yet. So in the coming few days, AC Milan will decide if they want to go for Bailey as first choice and if Man United will accept a loan deal for him. Paul, your idea on that one. So you think to let Bailey leave on loan is a good idea for Man United? How do you see this player and his potential move to, to AC Milan? I, there was a point not too many years ago where I genuinely thought he was Manchester United's best centre-half. And I, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what's happened. I know he's had some injury issues and what have you, but it feels to me like there's a very well-trodden path in the last couple of years where guys who haven't made it at Manchester United go to Serie A and are really, really good. Um, you know, perhaps saying probably more about Manchester United and the issues that they've got <laughs> rather than the, you know, the, quality of the, the quality of the player, I guess. Yes. Yes, and also wanted to ask you your opinion on a Milan moment in general, because Liverpool were amazing with, with a Milan in, in, in Champions League group this year. And so the feeling you had about a Milan, because they're trying to rebuild, of course, they still have Zlatan Ibrahimovic, he's 40, but he's still the leader of the team. They need something fresh in attacking positions. But they also have some interesting players like Sandro Tonali, like Ficayo Tomori, who is doing great here in Serie A. So your opinion in general about a Milan? I mean, it's, it's tough. It's tough to sort of sit here and wax lyrical about how good AC Milan are because Liverpool kind of made short work of them, really. Um, particularly yes. San Siro, you know, Liverpool were able to dispatch them with a with a B team effectively. But I mean, look, AC Milan are one of the the superpowers. You know, personally for me, they're, they're right up there. Obviously, Liverpool have got a great history with them. Of course, going back to two Champions League finals in the mid noughties and I. I would like to see them get back on top, but I think they need they do need more quality. And look, Zlatan, it's all well and good. I mean, he's almost eternal. And we know we know the, the Serie A is very much the league to go to if you want to play towards heading towards your forties. Um, yes. <laughs> but if they want to compete, if they want to compete at the top, look at what you know, Inter Milan uh, capturing the Scudetto. It's, they've got Lukaku up front. You know, look at what you've, uh, Juventus has done for years and years. You need to have, I think you need firepower and you need fresh legs and you need someone you can play week in, week out, to be honest as well. So I've been impressed by how they've managed to get themselves back into the Champions League conversation. 
But if they want to go to that next level, then they're going to have to invest. Yes, before moving into I and I really like your point at the end of on, on a similar project, but I wanted to ask you the last one before we move into the final tweet is about Inter Milan because Liverpool are going to face another uh, Italian club in, in Champions League. The feeling you have is in, in England is like an easy game because I live in Italy, you know, I live in Milano and we have the expectation, okay, Liverpool are simply impossible to, to, to beat for, for, for Inter. It's going to be more than complicated. They will try, of course, they are champions of Italy, but it's going to be more than complicated. But is the feeling you have about Inter in, in England? Honestly, I would suggest that Inter will probably be a, a stay in the test. They just will be. I know they obviously had to have a little bit of a rethink in the summer, you know, mm-hmm. uh, after everything that kind of went on there. But they are... You know they are the champions, and that that that's worth something, I think, and that's the difference between themselves and AC Milan. You look at the top of Serie A. There's not much between mm-hmm. most of that top four. Um, little part of me that wants to be able to say Liverpool knocked out the champions <laughs> elect on the way to winning it or something. But I, uh, yeah, I would I would reckon Inter Milan will be a much a much more difficult test, and particularly when you get to the the knockouts and stuff, and it matters more. Um, yeah, I've 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 I say fear, but. I, because I think Liverpool have got a brilliant squad and it will depend how many of that squad are available by that point. I think we're all crossing our fingers and toes that um, Salah and Mane come back uh, unaffected from Afghan, yeah. shall we say. But no, I, I think Aiden Tamal will be a much more difficult test than AC was. Yes, yes, yes. I, I agree with you. And we move into the final tweet for a player who leaves Liverpool City, but leaving Everton and this. Lucas Dean, who is going to join and joined in the last few hours, Aston Villa on permanent move from, from Everton. is a done deal on a four-year and half contract, so everything has been completed. Uh, wanted to ask your opinion on that one. Uh, if you expected this kind of move for, for Lucas Dean to leave Everton in January to join Aston Villa, we had some rumours about Newcastle and other clubs, but he always wanted to go to Aston Villa. He's really attracted by the opportunity to play with Steve Gerrard as a manager. This is what I'm told. He's really happy with this possibility. So wanted to ask your opinion, Paul, on this one. Yeah, no, I think we're seeing that already, aren't we? I think it's an interesting challenge for Newcastle because Newcastle have clearly got the funds, but, you know, the fact that they don't have a manager that's the same level of draw. Mm-hmm. I don't think the Newcastle project is exciting unless you're 100% excited by money uh, and maybe, you know, playing in black and white stripes and, you know, seeing half naked men celebrating uh, in the stands in the middle of the freezing cold of January. But <laughs> in, in Aston Villa, it feels like a much more solid project than the Jedi. I think I, Luca Dean, I, I, I mean, I, he arguably in top three of Everton's best players, you know, and certainly has been for, for a few years. I think statistically, he's right up there with the best left-backs on the planet. I know a lot of Evertonians have been quite keen to, to debate the, the merits of Dina or Andy Robertson and who's the best uh, left-back in the sure. Premier League. Of course, it's Robertson. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, no, I, I, that's a steal. Um, for Aston Villa, you're getting, you know, experience, quality, he'll add to that side. And yeah, that's, um, yeah, it speaks volumes to what Gerard's doing that in the Coutinho deal. I'm not sure that Dean Smith gets those deals over the line. Yes, yes, yes. And it's going to be super interesting to see how it works for, for Lucas Dean, for Coutinho. But the feeling I have, and I wanted to ask you that one before we move into Liverpool topic uh, about the Liverpool legend, because we mentioned him, Steve Gerrard, but he's doing great with Aston Villa. But I'm told by people in football, like agents of players and this kind of things, they're really attracted by the possibility of bringing players to Aston Villa because of Gerrard, but not just because of the name, the mm-hmm. legend. It's not just because he's Steve Gerrard, but because... I'm told that he's doing great also day by day in training session, this kind of things. Players are super happy. So you see him one day at Liverpool, maybe. Uh, fingers crossed. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's an interesting step up. I mean, the big question is going to be is the step up from Villa to Liverpool. Is that, is that one step or does there have to be another intermediate step? But I mean, look, so far, so good. It's, it's very early days. We saw him at Anfield a few, a few weeks ago. And the one thing you can say that's encouraging about his management style is that he demands 100% commitment from his players, um, which is very how Klopp has Liverpool, to, to be perfectly honest. But look, Gerard is he, he carries an aura about him. I think he conducts himself brilliantly as a manager. Or he's very he's a very cool customer with the media and how he how he handles himself and how he talks about his team and how he talks about his players. He obviously commands respect, not just because he's Steven Gerrard, but he's yeah. got a very he's got a very good demeanor about him as well. So 
yeah, he feels like a Liverpool manager, but obviously he's very much the Aston Villa manager and we want him to be as successful as he can possibly be as long as it doesn't interfere with what Liverpool are trying to do. Of course, it's going gonna, gonna to take time and, and we will see. So let's jump into it, into the big one, into the topic one. Paul, and this about Liverpool, of course, with our statement here on the Beatable and this, Liverpool are only looking for new signings at the long term. So the idea, the transfer strategy of Liverpool, this is something we wanted to discuss together with you, because personally, I'm so attracted, you know, uh, I know that maybe for fans on social media is not easy to see other clubs signing players. But then at the end, when you are on Saturday and Sunday playing football, Liverpool are always among the best teams. Also, if they are not signing many and many players, they signed Ibra Konate in the summer. It was a great one. So I want your opinion on that strategy from Liverpool. I am a big believer in Liverpool's strategy and, and as you point out, that doesn't necessarily go down well on social media because everyone, yeah, I mean, we, we, do, we, we do it ourselves. You know, we all like to, uh, we all like to stir things up. We like to talk about transfers because it's fascinating. You know, it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's the most exciting thing that doesn't involve kicking a football. Sure. Um, but I, I agree. I think Liverpool's transfer business has been as, as close to perfect as a football club's got on it over the last five years. If you look at short-term signings and reactionary signings, you have to look back to the last January for Liverpool. Liverpool were in a defensive crisis and they held on and they tried to get a couple of deals over the line late and yes. they ended up with Ozan Kabak, who you know, is, a, is a good player. But you know, I, I think he's found his level at, at Norwich at this stage of his career. And Ben Davies, who didn't even kick a ball for Liverpool. I, but what the plan was always Canate. They couldn't get that done in January, sure. so they were prepared to wait until the summer. And we're already seeing now, he's not there yet, he's not the finished article, but he's much closer to the standard that Liverpool require. And you can see, if this is how good he is right now, another year, two years playing under Jürgen, playing with Virgil van Dijk, etc. Yeah, sure. I, I think that's that's been the key to Liverpool's success is patience. Yes, and I think this is going to change in the summer, of course, because it will be time to have something fresh, no? to add something fresh to the team. So I expect Liverpool to sign some players in offensive positions, maybe a new winger, uh, maybe a new striker, so something like this, something in the midfield that is also, is also needed. Uh, how do you see the summer for Liverpool? Before we jump into Mo Salah contract topic, but summer in general, summer 2022, you expect Liverpool to sign some players because my expectation is two or three signings could arrive at Liverpool. Yeah, I, I would expect them to add something to the attacking areas, certainly. But I think so much of this will hinge upon... I think there's a, a domino effect around Salah's contract, which I know we'll talk about in a second. But And there's, I think there's a number of sort of plans, depending on how that goes. Because if you can't get that done, then what you've probably got to do is go and sign Mane's contract, get that sorted, or, or sure. maybe get Firmino's contract sorted, because they're all in the similar boat. They're all the same age bracket. You don't want a situation where they're all tied down, but you don't want a situation where they're all not tied down. So there needs to be some sensible thinking there. And then I think that will impact whether Liverpool go for a left-sided player, maybe or a right-sided player. Because if you know that you're not getting too much of Salah, and only you've only got another yeah. year of Salah, you get someone in to either... Well, you either sell Salah or you get someone in to, to train on the job underneath him to learn the role as best as possible. Or you look to maybe say, can you get some value out of Sadio Mane and therefore do you need someone else on that side? And you mentioned the striker. We don't even know whether, on Jota, who I think has been a fantastic buy for Liverpool, sure. we don't know whether he's a left-sided player or a striker. He's played mainly as a striker this season because Firmino's been injured. So I think that will impact what sort of profile of player Liverpool are looking for. Of course, and it's going to be a super interesting summer for Liverpool, I'm sure. And so we jump into Mo Salah, because it's the big one right now. He spoke a few days ago, again, about his situation, his contract situation. And I'm still told that they are in tolls and Liverpool are convinced that they can do it. They know that timing will be so important to get it done uh, before the summer. So this is the expectation around Liverpool. I'm also told, I don't know if it's the same for your side, Paul, that last summer, like in May, in June, someone from Paris Saint-Germain, was asking around about Mo Salah uh, before Leo Messi stuff, of course, but something was happening that Mo Salah decided to stay in Liverpool, only wanted Mo Salah to stay, of course, but they were already asking around the situation of, of Mo Salah. Now, since that they are still negotiating, they are working on new deal, let's see if they will get it done before the summer. What is your feeling on that one and your information on that? Yeah, I mean, my, my overall feeling, I, I think Liverpool are sort of lucky in some situations that the financial situation around around football means that 
I mean, five, six, ten years ago, I think there's more football clubs that would be banging on Liverpool's door trying to get Mo Salah. And I think there's a very small market of clubs that not only can afford him, but also could afford his wages these days. And Paris Saint-Germain are definitely the one. And I can understand that makes perfect sense to me. That's that, that's the move where you're thinking, well, Mbappe is going to move on at some point. They're going to need someone to come in, another global icon to kind of fill a mantle or, or and sell some shirts and what have you. And Salah would make perfect sense. And of course, again, the money, the money's there in that regard. So no surprise. Um, well, Liverpool PSG. can't lose Salah. <laughs> well, no, exactly. And that's, and that, but Liverpool have never been in this position before, um, Fab, where they literally own the best player on the planet. And, you know, and Liverpool have very much been that club where those players move on. You know, maybe slightly past their prime sometimes. So as an example, like Fernando Torres is a good example. Obviously, too often Liverpool have let players go before their prime. Suarez, Sterling um, being the most recent ones of that. And I've, I've lived to regret it, really. It's tough because, as we mentioned, it's not just the transfer strategy. It's, it's everything. It's how Liverpool are budgeted. Liverpool are budgeted in such a way that they don't like to have superstars. They don't like to have guys who are in and so far and above and beyond everyone else. But, sure. but Salah is so good. I, this, I think there's one of those exceptions where I think even the entire Liverpool squad would look and say, yeah, this guy, if you're going to break the rules for one guy, you definitely break it for Salah. But Klopp seems reasonably um, relaxed about the whole thing, uh, which is yes. where I take my encouragement from. Uh, there's a lot of there's obviously a lot of moving pieces to this. Um, and it's a shame because I think we'd all, just, I think as fans, everyone would just go pay him what he wants. Pay him whatever yes. he wants, just get it sorted. And we'd all do that on Football Manager, I'm certain of it. We'd find other ways to make it work. But yeah, I, I, Liverpool, Liverpool, I've got some very, very clever people behind the scenes. I don't think it would be penny pinching. I think it would be part of a wider strategy and not undercut the future of the football club, but also, you know, safeguard the presence as well. So interesting few weeks and months. Yes, absolutely. And I still see, as you as you say, I still see Liverpool confident on that one also behind the scenes. They're still saying that they're working. They're in negotiation also on Salah's side. They're still waiting to see what happens, but with an optimistic feeling. So uh, I hope really for Liverpool, they can continue with Mo Salah. I still remember when he arrived here in Italy with Fiorentina, was incredible, then with Roma. I still remember some Roma fans celebrating when they sold him for 50 million. But then now with 50 million, you maybe could buy even a shirt of Mo Salah. So football <laughs> is like this sometimes. And uh, let's move to our next topic, Paul. And it's about another fantastic player, in this case, a talent, because we're talking about Dujan Vlaovic, Fiorentina striker, as Mo Salah was a few years ago. And the statement is, Vlaovic will be the next big thing of European football after Mbappé and Holland, of course, that are the two big stars. But this boy, Dujan Vlaovic, seems to be really special. And I also want your opinion, Paul, maybe if Liverpool could be in the race in the summer, because many clubs are working to sign this boy, he's not kind of Liverpool deal because you need to pay a lot of money to people close to the player uh, so it's not an easy negotiation it's not an easy race but this striker is fantastic he reminds me of Prime Ibrahimovic he's scoring goals he's a leader his mentality is incredible and he's playing for Fiorentina not for a winning club in Italy with all respect with Fiorentina but of course he's not Inter Juventus Milan or this kind of clubs so what he's doing is incredible I wanted your feeling your opinion on, on Dujan Vlaovic yeah, it's interesting because I think he was linked last summer with Liverpool, so we did a little bit of a, a little bit of digging into. And I'll be honest, my fear with him, and I have this whenever you see big centre forwards, Liverpool have a pretty bad track record of buying big guys to play up front, you know. And there's been mixed results, certainly. I mean, I, I'm sure he's probably going to go on to have a bigger, a bigger, maybe higher end career than the likes of Peter Crouch, for example, or, or Andy Carroll. But you know, Liverpool had Morientes in 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 the 2000s as well, Christian Benteke. Um, so I was initially quite, you know, kind of like, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure, because, but, but when you see what he can do, I mean, and I also think Liverpool stylistically have changed this season as well, which is why, I, you know, I think Diogo Jota goal return has been excellent centre forward. I think when when he's been fit and playing, Origi has been scoring more goals for Liverpool because I think the system is being altered to better suit a number nine, which it wasn't previously. The system was built very much around Roberto Firmino. Someone like him, and look, I have a soft spot. As a, as a lefty myself, I've got a soft spot for a left footer, uh, of course, but he looks like, the, he looks like, he does, he looks like the total package. Whether he can do that outside of Serie A is another, that's a, that's an interesting question because I yes. don't, I don't like this Mbappe Haaland and then there's another guy because that other guy if you think about like Messi, Ronaldo, there's been a third best. Yes. And, How and many they destroyed? <laughs> exactly. Yes. It, it, exactly. But 
look at his age, look at his goal return already, which is getting better season on season. Um, I would be concerned if, if Arsenal were to manage to get that deal over the line in January, because <laughs> I think that would make them, maybe not, they're not going to challenge for the, the top three, but that might make them far healthier candidates for the top four. And then what do they do next season? Yes, would be something big for Arsenal and let's say the latest about Arsenal for, for Dujan Vlaovic from, from what I'm told is still really complicated to change his mind for January uh, just because the player, what happened? The player had a big fight with the city of Florence with Fiorentina fans in, in September uh, because they wanted him to sign a new deal. Fiorentina offered him the biggest contract in Fiorentina history, more than Batistuta or any other player in their history. But he said no, he turned out the proposal in September. So it was a big fight with Fiorentina fans. He's out of contract in 2000. 23 but then immediately after the fight in public he decided to focus on football his mentality was helping him to score goals and now the feeling is good again between Dujan Vlaovic and Fiorentina fans but he wants to bring Fiorentina back to European football and then leave in the summer it's maybe the best way to to leave Fiorentina uh, at, at the end of the season and this is why it's not easy to change his mind in January Arsenal are trying Arsenal have a special relationship with Fiorentina very good one also because of the Torreira deal in the summer but from what I'm told on Vlaovic's side the player is not that he's, he's disrespecting Arsenal but at the moment he doesn't want to move and he knows that in the summer he will have many and many chances many and many clubs ready to pay for him so this is why waiting is maybe the best strategy for Vlaovic let's see if Arsenal will be able to change his mind with an incredible proposal at the moment still seems complicated but let's see what happens and you you will see him very well immediately for for Arsenal because signing this kind of player as you said from Italy arriving in Premier League in January is not so easy no mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it, it does it take and look, getting up to the speed of the league and all those kind of things. And there are, again, there's there's plenty of exceptions to this. And maybe this is more around older players because there was that that trend for a number of years of, of guys toward the tail end of their careers coming over to the Premier League from Italy and really not being able to get up to the speed. But you can see yes. this this guy, you know, it, it's just what it's for me. I think it's his, it's his character. I think it's his determination. They're the things that Arsenal are, are crying out for. And, and also, just from a Liverpool perspective, why I actually think he'd be a, a wonderful fit for Liverpool, just in terms of his approach and his attitude. You read things from, from coaches, going back to Partizan and, and, and beyond, and they, they talk about that, they speak about there's a guy who's just got this incredible inbuilt determination to succeed. Um, yes. That would carry him through. But yeah, whether you could... I mean, you know, I don't think he's going to step into the Premier League mid-season and bag... 15 goals between now and the end, but he's definitely got a, a huge, huge future. Yes, yes. Let's see what happens with Dujan Blavich. Would be an interesting topic in the coming days or in the coming months if he's going to stay at Fiorentina. And let's answer our final questions from our listeners or followers on Debitable. Mike Kneebone asking, how important is it for Chelsea to keep Antonio Rudiger? He said he enjoyed this chapter. He's playing games. So my feeling, Mike, is for Chelsea would be super important to keep Tony Rudiger. But it's also important to say that one year ago, October 2020, so one year and a half ago, they were prepared to upload Tony Rudiger, uh, Tottenham and Milan. They were trying to find a solution. So the player now wants an important contract because he's now one of the best centre backs in Europe and not just in Premier League. And at the moment, they have still no agreement. So it's absolutely open for Tony Rudiger, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens. It's not easy for Chelsea to keep Tony Rudiger at the club. Martin is asking, do you really think Cristiano Ronaldo could leave this transfer window? I think no. I don't know your opinion, Paul, but I don't see Cristiano Ronaldo leaving in January. Absolutely, but also in the summer, I don't see Cristiano leaving my United. This is my feeling. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I guess it depends how horribly it goes, really, you know, <laughs> yes. and, and whether he feels, you know, if Manchester United don't finish in into the Champions League positions, will Cristiano Ronaldo want to waste one of the last couple of seasons of his of his career not playing Champions League football? But I'm still waiting for that inevitable. He gets given the player manager's job uh, at United thing to happen, but we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see on that one. Yes, yes, yes. I think my United fans could be happy at the moment with Cristiano and they need to rebuild with a new manager. This is to be the, the big one of the year. And then at the end, Connor saying, Fabrizio, we're we going to see you in a Marvel film in the near future because of the tweet of Zendaya. This is to be the most unexpected crossover. She tweeted, here we go. And I was a bit surprised when I saw it, but was not related to, to football or Newcastle. Someone asked me about Newcastle. No, they are not signing them. Uh, so at the moment, you're not going to see me in any film. But 
but uh, this is not in my plans. I want to continue as a journalist. So uh, let me say a big thanks, guys, to our listeners and followers. As always, you have been listening and watching, as always, the Beatable here on 11 Football. Let us know your thoughts in the uh, comments. So leave a comment on YouTube or wherever you are following us. And a big thank to Paul for being part of the show. It was amazing. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, mate. It was a super pleasure. So see you soon on the Beatable.